Folks, good afternoon. Earthmaster here checking in on the live stream on this beautiful Monday afternoon, May 17, 2021. It is about 1.40 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Latest quake, a five-pointer up here striking off the Aleutian Island chain into the uh, very end of it, right, right about the edge of that uh, the chain area, as you can see on the Earthquake 3D globe, that five-pointer in the a green flag another view from the usgs uh page here hold on one second there we go shows that uh, five pointer usgs has this at the uh, rat islands aleutian island area of course, of course along the aleutian trench major uh, player in the subduction plate of the pacific uh, plate area we've seen quite a bit of movement along the pacific plate over the last 24 hours Nothing significant, but definitely on a broader view uh, throughout parts of uh, the western edge and down through the Tonga area. Seen a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity. This five-pointer struck at about 15, 15 kilometers or so inland down, uh, down there in the uh, trench area. Of course, this area seismically active over, uh, over any given day. Today, no different. Uh, we have seen a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity along the uh, areas here to the north, northern Iran. Getting in on some good action out there. A few fives. Oh, a couple fives. Okay, there we go. A couple fives and some fours. I'm going to go back the last seven days here and check out the activity. 4.5 and above. Uh, not a lot of movement here, folks. Uh, even in the last 30 days, 4.5 and above. So this uh, sequences of fives here could be pointing uh, towards some building up uh, more more uh, higher magnitudes is what I'm trying to say. Possibly. Um, whenever we see, you know, a little group of fives and whatnot, uh, kind of uh, makes you scratch your head a little bit. Makes you uh, wonder what's going on in this region. Historical seismic activity in this area of Iran uh, shows some decent movement over the past 120 years or so. Uh, of course, Iran does get some larger quakes, not specifically in this area. Uh, most of the larger ones we've seen have been down to the south, but uh, uh, way down south. But uh, this area to the north, it can see uh, looks like some uh, some movement up around the five six range. So possible we could be looking at uh, an increase in the. Uh, uh, some higher magnitudes here in this area. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. Default depth of 10 kilometers below surface for that uh, pair of quakes, including that 4.4. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Um, zooming in over to this part of the world here. Kind of talked about this uh, a little bit. 5.2 down there in the western Indian Antarctica Ridge area. And some further movement, 4.9. Uh, what is that, Balany Islands? Way down south here towards the Antarctica area. It looks like an on the Antarctica plate. Some further movement around the Tong Tonga area. Uh, all this activity showing up rather deeply, 417 kilometers. That's a significant deep quake here. North, uh, Northwest Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea uh, area. That's a that's an extremely deep quake, uh, and then back over here, uh, 4.5 near the Vanuatu area, and also 258 kilometers uh, for this uh, 5.1 here near Tonga. So just uh, overall, some pretty deep movement over the last 24 hours, folks. So kind of keep an eye on that region. We have been seeing a little increase in earthquake activity in Northern California over the last 24 we'll keep it at the 2.5 and above so i can show you guys these individual quakes that are popping off renewed earthquake activity up here underneath the lake of lake uh lake tahoe i was going to say lake yellowstone but that's not in the area that we're looking at lake tahoe of course as you know there was a uh, pretty good size quake shaking things up here uh let's see it's going to be this one right here that 4.7 struck uh oh over a week or so ago now about 10 days ago 11 days ago, somewhere around there, northwest of Truckee. That's that 4.7 that struck a ways away from the lake. 
Now, if you take a look at the 30 days, 2.5 and above, a little bit of aftershock activity following that 4.7, but prior to that 4.7, we've seen a, a increase in earthquake activity right smack dab in the middle of Lake Tahoe. And that's kind of where we're seeing the activity pop off today and within the last hour uh, with this 2.9. And then prior to that, just a short time ago, just I'm talking about uh, a little bit ago, uh, we've seen that 3.6. Roughly in about the same area. And these earthquakes are relatively shallow. Negative 2 and a negative, uh, what's this one right here? Negative 1.7. Uh, for both of these earthquakes here. Actually, looking at this, okay, this is a little bit backwards here. So 3.6 struck first up here to the north, uh, kind of away from this warming area. And then we're seeing a little aftershock. Well, I don't know if we can call it aftershock activity, but uh, another earthquake south of the 3.6 within the vicinity of where that cluster of quakes took place here. Uh, about 10 days or so, 11 days uh, or ago. So kind of interesting to watch this movement uh, right smack dab underneath the lake. And 3.6 is about, uh, okay, they did have a 3.7 back on the 25th of April in the same vicinity. Uh, so this 3.6 that just struck is going to be the second largest quake here in the Lake Tahoe area, aside from that 4.7 that struck northwest uh, of Truckee. But this area we're kind of watching uh, because it does uh, kind of give us an idea of some pressure buildup out here along the North American plate, which could possibly uh, trigger some further aftershock activity or some increased movement in the area where we've seen that 4.7 there north of uh, Truckee area. So kind of watching that pretty closely. We did see some further movement uh, along the Cascadia, the southern end of the Cascadia uh, Megathrust zone, right, right uh, kind of close to the Mendocino Triple Point Junction, uh, northern end of the San Andreas Fault here. Uh, that plate boundary of the Pacific and North American plate, 3.1, 15 kilometers, and then a little bit further inland, uh, a 2.9 striking at 17 kilometers below surface. Uh, and far as 2.5 goes, not a whole lot above that. You have to go to the all magnitudes to get in on some of the action out there. You can see a little bit of aftershock activity in the Truckee area at the micro, uh, micro quake level, 2.4, and a little bit smaller one in between the uh, uh, 4.7 area and the, the town of Truckee. So this area kind of kind of a hot spot right now, folks. Want to keep an eye on that. Uh, overall seismic activity down south into Ridgecrest, pretty quiet. And also down into Southern California, just a couple small microquakes uh, around the uh, Beaumont, Beaumont area. I think I <laughs> pronounced that wrong last time and got corrected pretty quickly. Beaumont, Beaumont, right? Beaumont. Uh, and most of this activity appearing along the San Jacinto Fault area. San Andreas Fault remains relatively quiet. Uh, with only a small little microquake down here near Westmoreland uh, along the Brawley Seismic Zone, uh, well south of the San Andreas Fault. And uh, Oklahoma getting in on the action a little bit. It looks like a little bit of activity up here around the Lake Yellowstone or uh, Yellowstone National Park region as well. Heb Hebgen Lake, West Yellowstone. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone thumbnails here. I haven't even seen this uh, today. As we look over here to the west, western part of the uh, Maple Creek would probably show it. There's a couple small microquake activity showing up there. That could be what we're seeing on the USGS map, um, but nothing big. No major swarms going on, just a couple sporadic uh, quakes popping off there in the region. Very small, negative one or a 0 0.1, 0 0.3, uh, but at least the USGS is showing those microquakes. That's pretty good. I applaud you. I applaud you for uh, putting those microquakes up there. It's kind of important to watch all that activity. Salt Lake City up north was getting, uh, or at least north of Salt Lake City. That was yesterday, I believe. Um, getting in on a little bit of the action. 3.2 near Providence, Utah. About 9.4 kilometers below the surface there. 
Uh, let's see, what have we got in South America? Things kind of calming down a little bit compared to yesterday. Did see a couple pairs of deep movement followed up by some shallow earthquakes back up towards the uh, Peru-Chile Trench, the uh, subduction area. Today, just a pair of deep earthquakes in an area confined, <coughs> excuse me, to the north here, uh, inland. Most of these uh, deep quakes here kind of adding up, building up pressure into the regions upstream, backstream up here along the trench. So we're gonna have to watch this activity along with the activity we've seen over the past couple days. Uh, could be pointing towards a, uh, a little bit larger quake in this region at the subduction point. Those two earthquakes there, 122 kilometers below the surface. All right, folks, we're gonna jump off here. Um, hope everyone has a good day. Just FYI, the trimmer map from yesterday shows nothing, zip zero. So that means trimmer along the Cascadia has completely come to a halt for now. We'll see what it looks like a little bit later on. Have a good day, folks. We'll chat you a little bit later. Stay safe.